Eiffel is undoubtedly the uh, most famous landmark here in Paris. So from the tower, we go to the car. It's a nice place that we managed to stop and uh, bring you some of the details on the car as far as the looks are concerned. At the back, the car has a tendency to look nice and compact, and I think that's a good thing in our cities. Also, the tail lamp uh, cluster is very distinct. It's got a lot of straight lines in it, distinctly French in terms of its styling, and uh, we don't have stuff like this in our market, so that's good. The Fluence badging is uh, fairly distinct because it's bold, it's big, and it's accompanied with this chrome strip. It's right in the center too, so that's different. And the Renault logo on top, well, you know all about that. Now, on the side, again, that same compact look continues because you've got this uh, line that starts off from the tail and comes all the way along the side, and it's pretty distinct because it runs all the way to the front. So it adds a little bit of uh, character to the car's look on the side. It doesn't make it look drab because otherwise, uh, it's pretty generic looking as far as the side profile is concerned. Nice treatment of the door handles. It's not chrome, and I'm so glad, but uh, in India, remember that we all love chrome, so perhaps Renault is gonna opt for chrome, but I like this, the little dull metal finish. Down here, it's not a side skirt, it's a bit of a side body panel, molding, whatever you want to call it, but it's big and it's chunky and it's plastic, and that's going to be good again in our awful, awful parking lots, isn't it? So it's going to try and save some of the paintwork there anyway. A little bit of a side indicator tucked into the mirror here, nothing special, but in the front, this is the part that I really actually like with the styling because this is very, very distinct. It's so different, we don't have anything like it in our market. The hood line, it sort of cuts right through all the way high up here, so that's nice. The big logo, that's very familiar territory when it comes to Renaults and that's something we'll get used to seeing. But this is the part of the story that I like. Look at this. There's this line which comes right down here into the logo and uh, provides a lot of definition to the hood lid. So that's uh, very different. The front grille, well, there's hardly much of it, but it's down here. Lots of chrome thrown in there and uh, pretty subtle still. The fog lamps, again, have a little bit of a chrome housing. And of course, you come to the headlamp cluster, which is, again, very Renault, and uh, it's contemporary. It's uh, fairly blingy, too, so a lot of people are going to like that. So when you take a look at this car, and you see it coming up in your rear view mirror, you're going to think, hey, what's that? And that's perhaps going to be its biggest advantage, because it doesn't tend to look very big. Uh, I think that's a good thing, but uh, when you compare to a car like uh, the Civic, or perhaps even the Skoda Laura, it might seem to you that this car could look a little bit smaller. So it's a different looking car with the right proportions and yet a distinct character and also a lot of class coming through especially in the head and tail lamp cluster. Now the drive and here's where the being different part really stood out for me. The engine is the same 1.5 litre DCI block that powers the Logan and Nissan Micra in India but it felt surprisingly alert and adequate on this car too. Of course it's been tweaked to produce a whole lot more power. No lag, good response, and very smooth gear changes. The growly DCI motor is audibly apparent as being a common rail diesel at higher revs though, but overall the sound damping inside the cabin was more than satisfactory. We can't really get into the specifics because Renault is still to finalize the exact engine specs for the Indian Fluence. But suffice to say that this diesel will certainly arrive. There are of course two petrol options as well, but the car that we have on the show today is the 105 bhp DCI motor and frankly this would be our pick for India as the first model anyway. Manual transmission is the likely option as well. It's almost like a credit card but uh, a little gimmicky and I'm not sure if everybody's going to like that. That's the key really, the key hob that uh, you used to get in and get out and of course to open the boot, all of that. And when you come into the car, it just slides into this little slot like an ATM machine <laughs> and then you got a start-stop button to get the car started. 